Hello and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I am Alicia, your host, and today we are going to talk about grade five piano. Now, this is something that we talk about habitually, like every, I don't know, half year or so, we'll, we'll do a new grade. So if you feel like you're not at a grade five level, um, you can always come back to this video later, maybe check out some of the other ones we've done on like grade four, grade three, preparatory, etc. cetera. Um, what I wanna show you with this video is I wanna look at ABRSM and the RCM. I wanna compare them a bit and walk you through what would be expected at this level and especially what would be expected of, at, at an exam at this level. Um, now, even if you're not interested in doing exams, that's totally fine. Um, this will still give you an idea if you're like a solid intermediate student of some of the things that you should be able to do at this level. Um, I, I find this is helpful like to give students a little bit of structure because not everyone, um, not everyone wants to do exams, but most piano students benefit from like a little bit of structure in their playing. So that's why I do these videos. Um, yeah, you can check out the, we're gonna be referencing the RCM syllabus a lot and the ABRSM one as well. So I'll have the links um, on the blog post and you can have that link I said the word link a lot. You can check that out in the description bar. Let's get started. Also, it's if it seems really dark in here, it's because winter has come to Saskatchewan. It's really cold and dark out right now. For a younger student who's going through the levels, grade five typically corresponds with their seventh year. It just depends on how hard they're working. Um, if you're like a pretty motivated adult, grade five piano might correspond with like your fourth or fifth year. It just kind of depends on, yeah, again, how fast you're going through the material. Grade three was when we hit the intermediate section. I tend to consider intermediate to be about grade three to six, grade three to seven. So grade five is like solidly in the middle. You're not doing baby pieces anymore, but you're not yet at the level of like, like um, even some of the easier sonatas by Mozart, Beethoven, um, still not quite getting into the difficult romantic repertoire by guys like Chopin and Mendelssohn yet either, but that's in the next couple grades. According to the RCM syllabus, at level five, students encounter longer and more varied forms, fuller harmonic textures, and an increasingly sophisticated interplay of melody and accompaniment. Technical requirements expand to include dominant seventh chords. And we will talk about that. I actually have a whole video coming up about dominant seventh chords as well. Grade jumps tend to feel like really dramatic every couple of years or so. So what I find is that the jump from grade one to two is like pretty easy. Most of my students have no problem with that jump, but the, grade, but the jump from grade two to three is a really big one because all of a sudden it's like, whoa, Santina's all of a sudden and it just feels quite a bit more difficult. Three and four, like that's a pretty comfortable step. But then again, four to five feels like a, like another giant leap forward. So if you're finding that like you were managing the grade three and four stuff okay, but grade five stuff seems like, whoa, what is going on? That is very normal. Grade five RCM and grade five ABRSM are a little different in terms of difficulty. Ultimately, RCM grade 10 is about equivalent with ABRSM eight. And then right in the middle, so right around where we are is where things are starting to split. So I generally tend to consider grade six to seven RCM and grade five ABRSM to be roughly equivalent. In general, grade five ABRSM is uh, a little more difficult as, as mentioned. Um, even though you don't have to learn as many pieces, the pieces that you do learn are a bit more challenging. Um, and then, so what you'll find is that pieces at a grade five ABRSM level are ranging um, from like a five to an eight if it was in the RCM. So the difficulty range I feel like is, is a little bit wider, but in general, yeah, it's a little, little more tough. So for grade five ABRSM, you need to choose three pieces, one from each category of like a list A, a list B, and then a list C. And with the Royal Conservatory, and at the level five Royal Conservatory, you need to have a list A, B, and C, just like ABRSM, but then you also need to be able to do two etudes. And etudes are like study pieces, so they're kind of somewhere between like scales and actual pieces. They're more like actual pieces than scales. The RCM and the ABRSM both have three categories for pieces at this level, so A, B, and C. List A pieces in the RCM are Baroque dances, as well as you have some like early Fantasias by Telemann. Um, there's like a couple like Baroque type sonatinas as well. So you have some of the first uh, Bach little prelude I oh, just the one so you have a Bach little prelude appear 
um, with more to come in, in future grades. Most of the little preludes are somewhere between like a grade seven to eight level. Um, you have some Scarlatti sonatas down here. You have some Scarlatti son sonatas over here, and then just some like general dances like March, Element, Minuet, etc. Um, most of the Baroque pieces at this level are written in contrapuntal style, which two voice style, they're basically the most challenging of all categories, and they are an exercise in hand independence. So this basically means that instead of the left hand just playing like chords, kind of like we do with romantic music or modern music, both hands are playing simultaneous melodies, and that can be a lot to work with. In the ABRSM, list A merges both classical and Baroque eras. So you'll see Bach and Haydn on the same list. Haydn is classical, Bach is Baroque. Um, you have Bach's son who would be classical, Handel's Baroque, etc. And I know I say this every time, but I want to reiterate, list A's, Baroque pieces and, and some of the classical ones on ABRSM, this is the most difficult category for most students. They're generally the oldest styles we learn on the piano, and because of that, they're the most unfamiliar, and they, they require a lot of dexterity, hand independence, and etc. Okay, so let's talk about list B's. In the RCM, this is going to mean classical and classical style music. This is where you're going to find like all the sonatina movements by um, Clementi, Hamel, Kulau, Diabelli, etc. Whoa, I just went really far. There are also a few other classical selections that aren't sonatinas. So you have, for example, Beethoven dances, like his German dances. Uh, you have some Mozart dances over here as well. Uh, if you're not like always wanting to do the sonatinas, there's a little bit of a reprieve from that if you like. Um, now, sonatinas are really challenging compared to other pieces at this level. And I know I just said that the list A stuff was the most difficult, but sonatinas are really like, even though they're more chord based, they're usually really fast. They're long. They have things like scales and arpeggios and Alberti bass and all kinds of things like that. Um, these are generally, generally going to be the longest pieces you're going to play for your exam if you're doing an exam. Um, so if you have like a list A piece and a B piece that like is one to two pages, your your sonatina is going to be double that easily. Luckily, you only have to learn one movement of a sonatina for your exam. So it's not like you have to learn an entire sonatina. That'd be 10 minutes or something like that. Um, but I do like to go all the way and my students will often learn like an entire sonatina anyway, just for fun, learn all the movements, why not? It's a challenge, but it's also really rewarding because then again, you can kind of sit down and jam out on the piano for 10 minutes. The ABRSM's list B uh, choices are a little different. Since list A encompassed Baroque and classical, the list B on theirs is romantic, like 19th century stuff. Now romantic era music is generally really well loved because it's expressive. It's a little closer to like what we would listen to nowadays is very chord based, um, lots of like different types of characters. So we have titles like Dream and The Heart Player, uh, and I guess some of the more boring titles like Poco Lento, but they, these are usually like pretty engaging and exciting pieces. Finally, we have List Cs. Now these are pretty similar between the RCM and ABRSM. Um, they focus on like modern 20th and 21st century pieces. But the, the big thing with the RCM is this also includes romantic stuff. So some of the same things you would have seen on ABRSM's List B you're gonna see here. Now this is a just absolutely massive category on the RCM. There's like, I'm just scrolling through here. There's probably, I don't know, like at least a hundred pieces there. So it's kind of nice that you have that much selection. It can be a little overwhelming. Um, you have everything from the gold standard Tchaikovsky pieces from album for the young, as well as Schumann's um, album for the young. Those are both collections that I usually tend to draw on pretty heavily. There's also a lot of um, jazz and blues that, like you have Martha Meir who has some really great jazz music and um, Christopher Norton also has some great jazz music. And then Kabalevsky would be a pretty standard 20th century composer as well as um, Bella Bartok. ABRSM list C's are going to be, again, like the, the 20th, 21st century stuff. So you're going to see William Gillock, New Orleans Nightfall. It's a really great piece. I really like uh, Gillock's, Gillock's music. I teach it a lot. Um, Prokofiev, uh, Poulenc. Um, now this is, this is a really great album, um, Villageois. Villageois, was, I'm not sure how to say that plural in, in French, um, but this is his, what, from what I know, his easiest collection of music. Um, so this would be about a grade seven RCM level, grade seven or eight. So again, it's like, you can definitely tell that the ABRSM, ABRSM stuff is a little harder, but 
In this category, it's fine because they're really fun to learn too. Finally, we have the RCM only category of etudes. These are the study pieces that are kind of like, like exercises. So Cherney is a really classic guy who writes good exercises. So you'll see that. Now, one of my favorites, I really like teaching in church by Tchaikovsky from his album for the young. This is, it's just, it's really chordal. It's like a really good study in chords It's so moody. Um, I, yeah, I learned that one. I remember way back in the day when I did my grade five, it's a great piece. You have some Kabalevsky, Heller, basically all of these pieces in the short list have like a really specific technical component to work on, whether it's like staccatos or chords or, or things like that. Another thing that's unique to the RCM is their pop syllabus. Now this is really cool. They give you the option to, you, you have to learn two etudes at this level. They give you an option to swap out one of the etudes for a grade five or grade six level pop piece that's on this list. And these these syllabi and everything are, are free online. You can get them uh, just by like Googling them if you want, like RCM pop syllabus is all this one is. Um, and it, it's a really good range. So you have things like Ghostbusters, but you have more modern pieces like Falling Slowly from the Movie Once. Um, you have like Beyonce and the Beatles. And yeah, there's just, it's always really, really fun to lean on this list, especially once you start hitting a grade five level, even more so when you're on the seven and eight level, the pop songs get like pretty complex and really interesting to play. And some of these pop pieces at like a grade one level are very like, I don't want to say babyish, but they're just like the arrangements are very like simultaneously really simple, empty sounding almost. So like by this grade, they're starting to sound quite a bit more interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the technique for each side of things. RCM grade five sees us continuing to do two octave hands together scales in the major harmonic and melodic minor keys. Um, they're just, it's pretty much the same as last time, just different scales and they're a little faster. Um, there's also the formula patterns to contend with as well, but again, you're not new to formula patterns at this point. The biggest challenge, and I alluded to this, is adding dominant seventh chords. These, uh, along with the arpeggios, which were new last grade, are played hand separately. So they make it a little easier for you to get started. Um, but you, you'll, you can check out that video when I do that. In the ABRSM, you'll actually see like a really big jump. So with this grade, you actually have to do all major and minor scales, like in all keys, hands together, three octaves. Um, this is something that you don't have to do in the RCM till I believe like grade nine. So that's like a huge, huge thing. Um, you need to be able to play them hands separately and hands together. And you're going to see some contrary motion scales for the first time, chromatic scales. Um, just like last year, too, you're going to have the hands separate and together arpeggios. Um, now they're just going to be in like major and minor keys, like all, all the keys. <laughs> Basically, like up until now, I would have considered the RCM technique to be more difficult um, and more diverse, too. But this year, the ABRSM really steps it up and it's probably like more difficult. Um, than like the next several grades in the RCM. Okay, so we talked about technique, we've talked about all the pieces, now we gotta talk about two other categories that you have on both exam systems, and this is one that people often overlook. You have sight reading and ear training. Sight reading is when you basically like read a fragment of a piece on the piano, just like off the cuff, both rhythm and actually like pressing the notes. The RCM grade five sight reading is going to be about comparable to grade two music. So what you can do is if you have grade two level music books, you can just sight read off of those instead of buying like actual sight reading books. That's what I would do. Um, basically what you're going to need to be able to do is tap a steady beat in one hand while tapping a given rhythm in another, or you could like, you could tap a beat and like, sing speak the rhythm of an excerpt and then what you have to then do is take that rhythmic excerpt and play it on the piano it might be in three four 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 six eight like some of the more common time signatures it could be in a major or minor key with up to two sharps or flats in, in the rcm it's going to be about eight bars long just to give you a sense of the difficulty for grade five in the abrsm it's going to be a little more difficult it's going to be eight to twelve bars there's going to be more time signatures to worry about more uh keys to worry about um, and you're going to be stretching outside the five finger position so your note reading has to be pretty competent at this point the ABRSM gives you about half a minute to look through the excerpts and uh, even just like test out a couple things. But with the RCM, they prefer if you begin playing like 15 seconds in or so. Um, and they don't like when you like test, like play things in advance. So just to give you a heads up there. And then we have the ear tests. In the RCM, you have to listen to the examiner play something and then clap back the rhythm. You have to be able to identify interval distances. You have to be able to tell by ear if they're playing a major, minor, or dominant seventh chord. 
Um, and this is the one that I personally find the most difficult. You have to be able to hear a chord progression um, from like the one to the four to the one or the one to the five to the one. You have to be able to tell them which chord progression that's that is specifically. If it's a, like a perfect cadence or a plagal cadence. And then playback. This is the grand. This is like put it puts everything together. They're going to be playing a little excerpt for you and you have to just play it back. It's going to be in these keys. It's going to start on these notes, like the first, the third, the fifth or the eighth. It could yeah, be up to eight notes long and etc. For the ABRSM, you need to uh, do a melodic playback, which you do in the RCM2, or you sing it back like the melody. New to grade five is being able to sing six notes a cappella, so like with no accompaniment from a score that like the examiner gives you. And they'll play the first chord, but then you just have to freeform it from there. And then another thing you have to do is they'll play something on the piano, and then they'll ask you musical questions about it. And there's also a clapback, just like in the RCM. Finally, let's talk percentages, starting with the RCM. And I will go through this quick because it's the same as previous years. I think it's been the same for like the last three or four grades. Um, basically, you're, you need a 60 to pass the RCM. And your ear and sight makes up 20% of that. Your technique, including the etudes, makes up 25% of that, 24. Um, and then the heavily, most heavily weighted piece is the list B. Now, one thing the RCM does that ABRSM does not is they give you points for having things memorized, which is a great incentive to memorize. For the ABRSM, again, same thing. This is going to be the same as it's been in previous years. They weight all three pieces completely equally, um, a little less on the scales and, and stuff, 21 marks instead of 24, but it's basically the same. And they weight sight reading a little bit more heavily than ear training. So it's a mark out of 150, and I believe you need to have 100 marks to pass. So it's a little ha harder to pass. You need 66%. Now, here's the RCM syllabus that I have open, and this is a really good reference. I just want to refer to it again if you're looking for pieces to learn even if you're not doing your grades this is a great resource that has like a whole bunch of different pieces uh, at the same level and some are going to be easier than others it's not like they're going to be like completely identical in difficulty but they're all like relatively within the intermediate level so if you're if you're looking through for new things to check out you can check that out and that is all for today's video on grade five we have a series of grade five videos queued up and um, probably like in the next couple of months, we'll cover all the grade five stuff, including technique and my favorite books and all of those videos that we do at uh, every one of these levels. So if you want, um, if you want kind of like a list uh, post of like everything we've done, go to the blog because all of pretty much everything I've said is going to be over on the blog. And as I mentioned, you're also going to find the links to the syllabi. I think I said that right, the plural version of syllabus syllabuses isn't a word. I know it's time to wrap up a video and I start rambling like this, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next video.